You are listening to the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast with Chris and Garrett. Hello, and welcome to the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast. I'm Chris, and tonight Garrett and I are watching a movie from the 1980s, celebrating its 35th anniversary this month. From director John G. Avildsen, with Ralph Macchio and Pat Morita, Wake the Neighbors Kids, it's The Karate Kid Part 2. When this movie came out in 1986, expectations were high. The first Karate Kid movie, which came out in 1984, was a huge hit, as most of you listening know. Moviegoers flocked to learn more about the story of Daniel LaRusso and his sensei, Mr. Miyagi. Critics, as usual, were mixed on the results, but the film is an important part of an overall saga, laying the foundation for a third Karate Kid film and ultimately the popular television show, Cobra Kai. Garrett and I invite you to grab your copy of the movie and listen along as we do our commentary in celebration of the 35th anniversary of The Karate Kid Part 2. record this we gotta get this it's recording now it's recording yeah yeah i eat man i'm i'm telling you i'm really excited about doing this movie uh tonight i'm not <laughs> huh? i said i'm not you're not you're like uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you were so you had so much energy and i just felt like I'm not. <laughs> yeah, like nah. no. I, I'm looking forward to this. Do, I do, love do you feel like? Do you feel like Crease right here? It's like I think they were bug eyed because he actually he actually hurt himself putting his hands through those fake glass windows. Oh, he did actually, he really hurt? Himself? That's his blood. Actually, I mean, he he really did cut his hands. Oh wow! Did not uh-huh. know that. See, this is a cool. This is cool trivia. This too. Or you have you got some more stuff you want to share? Sorry. No, we can go ahead and get started. So I already ate my uh, snacks. Very, very 80s snacks, too. Um, I had uh, pizza rolls. And I also, my wife picked up, um, they had Mountain Dew Zero Baja Blast. All right, I don't know. Okay, 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 here we go. I don't know if you heard me, but I've already eaten all my snacks for tonight. Um I was doing it up 80 style though. I had some Totino's pizza rolls and, um, and a little tip for you. I don't know if you ever eat pizza rolls. We do. If there's um, so you know how they've got like popcorn seasonings, like different, like ranch and mm-hmm. caramel corn stuff. If you have some of the ranch, sprinkle a little bit of that on the pizza rolls when they come right out of the microwave, it's, it's, it's good. It's really good. So I had okay. some ranch pizza rolls. <laughs> ranch, um, little ranch. So I pizza. felt like it was an 80s snack because I remember having pizza rolls when I was a kid. Um, and uh, I've also got some uh, Mountain Dew Baja Blast Zero. Where'd you get that from? Lauren picked it up at the food line here in town. No way. Yeah. So yeah, Mountain Dew Zero. I don't know what's getting blurred. Um, yeah. Baja Blast. Dude, Man. I'm not. I've been looking at Kate. Okay, it has uh, a little uh, Taco Bell original. Little yes. On there. By April of last year, they had that stuff out. Uh-huh. This year, I've not seen it. I've all been waiting, and I'm like going, I was like, come on. I'll Pepsi. ask her where she got it. I'm pretty sure she got it at the food line. Well, um, I'm going to be searching. Now that you told me, I'm going to be all over that because – that's my stuff, man. I love it's good. Baja Blast Zero I, Sugar. I poured myself a tall glass in my Duke glass mug. Oh, I love it. Well, it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's awesome. Hmm. But I was really excited about the sequel. And it's one of those things, one of those movies, I don't know if you've ever had this experience where you watch it and your first reaction to it is like, well, that's, it's okay. It's not as good as the first one, but it's okay. That was the reaction I had the first time I saw it, but I was able to go see it in the theater again a few weeks later. And the second time I watched it, I'm like, 
no this is really good i like you know it's it's just something about it like you know so i i really think despite what the critics said at the time i i really love this sequel and so i was deliberately not watching it again in preparation for this because i enjoy it so much i like wanted to just kind of like hold off you know and like enjoy it like right it. but uh but yeah so i'm really excited i know you had mentioned at the outset you're excited about this well, us watching this and i am well, too because dude i was on vac- we were on vacation it was a family we were up and oh. we went up to see we went up the uh, east coast to like philadelphia new york boston and saw some family in maine and then went into canada and we were in Montreal, Canada. I, this is, I mean, this is why it sticks in my brain about where I was and whatever. And I remember wherever we, there was a movie theater down the street from where we stayed in Montreal. And we went yeah. one night and went to see Karate Kid 2 there. And that's what I mean. That's it just, it just like it's, yeah, it's that's awesome. Uh, so I saw another whole nother country. So <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. It really is. All right. Yep. Well, without further delay, let's let's get into this because I know we could probably wind up talking about a billion other things. So for everyone listening, first of all, welcome um, and uh, glad you're here to join us uh, with our 35th anniversary celebration of the Karate Kid Part 2. Yes. So we encourage you, let me get mine set up here. Um, and Garrett, you've already got your set up. I am a zero, 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 zero. Okay. So the way that we do things here, for those of you who may be new, um, or even if you've listened to some of our episodes before, is that uh, get your copy of the movie synced up. We're all starting at zero, and I'm going to count us down. And when I hit play, when I say play, everybody hit play, and so that way we can kind of be watching it at the same time together, uh, and it'll make the commentary make more sense as you're watching it. So, Karate Kid Part Two in three two one play i got columbia picture as well yep there's that flute yep there it is the pan flute Zam Fear, master of the pan flute, presents. So, if you haven't watched Karate Kid in a long time, well, here's a, here's a recap. <laughs> yeah, if you've never seen any of the, if you hadn't seen the first one, you're going to get your Cliff Notes version of it right now. Right. Oh. Good old Pat Morita. Pat Morita, man, is, is awesome. No and I love if you're listening to um, interviews with like Mark Cove and yeah. William. They talk about how his, you know, how great he is and yeah, or was. I mean, yeah, Tamlin Tamita. I mean, and 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 obviously, you know, Machio as well. Yeah, don't get me. Yeah, I, that post I, I put out earlier this week about Machio is like, I just think he, I mean, people love him as Daniel. I mean, he's kind of been typecast, but I just don't think enough is given to the fact that he is a terrific actor in this role. I mean, he, I mean, he's basically, we're seeing this all through his eyes. I mean, this is, the he's like, kind of like, he's the character we identify with this whole world of karate and mr miyagi and now in this movie going to japan and you know and it's it's an actor who can make you feel like you know you're seeing it through his eyes and you're relating to him and what he's going through uh, it's just a testament to his talent but the two of them are so good together it's such great chemistry between them i agree yes And to just mention Cobra Kai for a second, I love the way they handle Pat Morita, how they handle Mr. Miyagi. Like there's such reverence toward him and rightly so. I mean, just, but it, anytime they reference him, it just, I always think to myself, you know, I miss Pat Morita. 
<laughs> I miss Mr. Miyagi because mm. he just, you know, he's just a terrific actor and he just made that character so likable. And even you learn about his, you know, his youth growing up in Okinawa in this movie. It's like there's still so much I feel like we as an audience don't know about him. And they start to kind of hint at that in Cobra Kai. But uh oh yeah, I think there's they're yeah. setting up to you know to give you more. <laughs> so they they did I told you about earlier that uh, they did all this this rehearsal yeah ahead of time shot it on vhs yeah yeah right and mark code's not in it so he really came in late to like cast who do they have playing crease in the rehearsal it was it was the it was the the author the screen the screenwriter Oh, Robert Mark Keenan. That's right. Okay. And um, John Anderson said that he was going. To, he was going to do it, but he couldn't. Uh, Time wise, he couldn't do it or something. Yeah. So it's kind of is that was kind of funny to. I remember. <laughs> God, in my body bag. I remember there were some critics who were kind of bad mouthing the movie for the fact that it's like we don't need to see the first movie. Like, you know, we don't need this like five, ten minute recap of but I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I just I just, you know. It's like a highlight reel. I just see it as like, here's all the good stuff, you know. And here we go with that scene we were talking about. Yep. Oh, there's the shower scene. That's right. <laughs> he goes, I'm a maintenance man at your apartment complex. That's right. So that referee, he was the actual, I think, consultant for the movie. Yes, and a, and he played he played Crease in a couple of uh, at the JoJo scene when they did a rehearsal. He was the he played Crease, and and I don't know if he was really considered for the role or not. Look at Miyagi not shaking his head. <laughs> and I think this is why okay this is yeah where we go back to the whole thing about the bully stuff we yeah. see there's your villain yep
I've talked previously about if if I had to, if I was the screenwriter for the Karate Kid, I think I might have done things a little different. Like I think I would have made Johnny more of a character in the second one, like a good character. Well, I read I I read somewhere that he said that he went to talk to John about Karate Kid three. Yeah. And by him possibly being in it, and it just didn't. He says, "Oh, he said it just didn't work out." But I would have, yeah. I think, I mean, it, I mean, we probably wouldn't have Cobra Kai if, we, if they did this. But I think you mentioned this before. Yeah. That oh, this is offside. I shouldn't talk too much during the. And he said earlier that this was his real blood. This is. Yeah. Because that fake glass, I mean, it's still hard. I mean, you put your hand through, I mean, it's. (laughs) Still makes me laugh. (laughs) Hey. So originally there was a scene with Elizabeth shoot with Allie's character in the movie where she's going to Europe for the summer and she and Daniel have an argument and break up. But Shu had already gone back to Harvard. Um, you know, she was in college. So she went back to Harvard and um, I think she would have come back for it, but, but we, you know, we've, we've heard about like, I've heard different things, but basically what it boiled down to is they were like, well, we'll just, we're going to cut the scene out anyway. So we'll just, we'll put something in the dialogue that explains that they're broken up. Well, here we're going to find out. Paint a fence. <laughs> That's- Cosmic coincidence. Nice tux, by the way. That powder blue. I know, man. It's like that inspired Jim Carrey, Dumb and Dumber. Yep. How old was uh, Machio in this movie? Like, how old was he when he made this? Well, if it's only the next year, he's like, he was 22 when he filmed the first one. Right. So, 23, 24. Yeah. I think his birthday's in November. I think his, real, his birthday mm-hmm. is in November. So, probably 23 or 22. I don't know which. Yeah, 23. I can't believe that guy's in his 60s now. 
<laughs> even in his sixties, he looks he, he looks good for his age. Oh my gosh! Yeah, he could easily. Okay, his wife, Courtney Hegler, whatever her last name is. She's like her late thirties. Yeah. And real, I mean, so yeah. And he is like fifty. What in doing Cobra Kai has been like fifty. What 57, 58, 59, 58, 59, somewhere on there. Something like they could that. just turn sixty or yeah, or turn sixty this year or something. I'm, yeah. Which, <laughs> yeah. I'm going fishing. He's like, I tricked him again. <laughs> He's going to build this whole add on. He's a Satanist. Did we see this again? And- Caprica. Hawk steals this man, steals his medals. This is not right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's something, you know, just I when I was watching Cobra Kai, I was they did a really good job of recreating this set. Well, this is, I mean, okay, what I read about. The first movie was actually a real place and it was done up. They made this Mr. Miyagi's dojo, whatever, or his house and this whole, this here. Well, between filming the first one, and the second one, I guess they, the place had, I don't know, had been sold or I don't know what happened. Something happened to the to the place, so they had they recreated it on the lot for two and three, like it they so it was actually done. It was they actually re they built it on the I guess on Sony lot I guess or Columbia whatever. So yeah, you're talking about redoing it for and <laughs> and now and and. and Okinawa. But for the but for Cobra Kai, that's filmed out. That's the Miyagi Do is filmed down in Atlanta. So yeah. it's yeah, they really have done a great job of Pepperidge Farm remembers. Dear Miyagi, we tried to email you. You have not answered. You're not looking at your check tree. It's a letter from the power company. They're going to disconnect if I don't pay. I think in one of the first scripts for the Karate Kid, one the he was I think he was supposed to they wanted him to fight in the Japanese army. He didn't want to. John Avison said uh, in the, one of the YouTube comments when he was when he, he 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 made comment about he said that the guy the actor who plays 
was it Stato? Was that, Stato. Was that, that they would Bobby, whatever his name is, that they him and Pat were really good friends. Yeah. And uh, and he says that he's nothing like his character that he plays. Mm-hmm. He's this really funny guy, which is the same way with Pat. Pat's that, that actor, I remember he was also on an episode of uh Magnum PI. He played a friend of Higgins. And I think his character's name was Sato in that as well. <laughs> I... What about the glory of love? <laughs> I just had to wait. Patient. I will teach you all about the glory of love. Yeah, Bill Conti, Bill Conti does a great job on this mm-hmm. for all all the movies, but yep. I mean, the the music is so iconic. Just that flute, and just like you hear it, you know. Yeah, you give you blindfold, and you just hear that, and you go. Stan, we got a brilliant idea. I love this scene. They're just, this is such good acting here. Supposedly that's a real, that's actually a real book on Okinawa. It's not just a prop. I mean, it's a prop, but real prop. It's 
So we think they're going to Okinawa. They're really going to Hawaii. That's right. Oahu. Where good old Jeff actually went to Okinawa, found his glory of love and He was living. He was living Peter's and Tara's world. He goes, Peter, you sing it. I live it. And at nighttime on an airplane, you don't you don't get to see outside. It's pitch black <laughs> the magic of movies yes hey I think there's been fan theories that that somehow or another Terry Silver learned karate from Sato. <laughs> Don't know if we'll see that or not, but Now, one thing, you know, John Avison, uh, I, it's a question I want to ask Sean Kane, and he did, he did rehearsals. For, I, I know he did a rehearsal for the first one, obviously. He filmed it. Yeah. He released it. But he never released anything for Karate Kid 2 or 3 yeah. on his YouTube channel uh, before he passed away. I don't – I would love to know if he actually – if they rehearsed what it did for the first one. That's a great lock. So there's Sato Karate, Sato Construction, and then there's like a there was a, a sign for like an escort service. Sato <laughs> man, he's Sato. And John Avison said that he did a great job on his when he when he tried out for the yeah for the role. Yeah, he's great. It's a firm grip you got there, but okay, thanks. Like he sounds nice. Why is it hurting my hand? I think Daniel spider sensors are sensors are going off. Thank you. 
not so friendly now, is he? Silence. <laughs> what? Coward. But I'm seeing you now. Read my book. <laughs> No one throws down away the cobra like that. No one. I'm about to do a do a book commercial for Sean Cannon that way. Call an Uber. They, dis they disrespected your book, Sean. That's what the U.S. Puzzle Service did to my book. Threw on the ground. It's like, don't you? I'm dare. gonna take a quick. Uh... Comfort break. I'll be right back. Okay. You see, and, you, and you see the Sato whatever in the background on the building. Put shoe back on. Your feet stink. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, I'm I'm looking at Ralph Macchio. Yes, I know. I love the first Karate Kid. So I read somewhere that uh, Tamlin um, became very close to this actress. Um, they starred in a movie together, I guess, when Tamlin was older. Um, but 
I forget when this actress passed away, but apparently, you know, Tamlin was was very close with her and What? Say what? Something about it. He said, I'm flying yeah. high as a kite thanks to all that medicine I'm taking. He goes, he goes where are you being grasshopper? <laughs> he goes you remind me of that crazy pants uncle <laughs> meanwhile in Hawaii <laughs> Okinawa <laughs> Yeah. Ah, smells like the glory of love. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if, like, if it'd be like to like the if it pan to the left, there's Bill Conti over there on a pan flute to <laughs> play doing, doing the doing like. Well, it's like that would, do you do you remember back in the eighties? There was this guy I never. All I remember the commercials on TV, but his name was Zam Fear. Yes. Master of the pan flute. He had all these albums of him playing all these like classic songs with the pan flute. Yep. That would be a great, I need to, we need to look that up. That would be hilarious. Zam Fear plays ACDC. <laughs> Back in black. <laughs> <laughs> Hell's bells. Hell's bells. <laughs> Hell's bells. <laughs> the pan flute. <laughs> Hell's flute. Maybe that's what it should be called. <laughs> Who needs bells when we got the pan flute? Oh, good morning, Robbie. Strong sucky.
if you sprinkle when you tinkle, please be neat and wipe, and the, wipe seat. the seat. <laughs> Cut that down really quick. <laughs> Do you remember that there was a Karate Kid cartoon? I do not remember it originally. I do remember I've seen, I don't know, ads or whatever yeah. retro content about it, but I'm not, I do not remember seeing it at all when I, yeah. Did you watch it? I seem to recall catching an episode here or there. Um, I, I remember when it was being talked about. Um, but I remember part of it was uh, set in Okinawa. Uh, Pat Morita did do the voice for Mr. Miyagi. Um, I mean, well, I say he did uh, for part of it. Like, I think for the, he, he might have done narration or something like that. But then there was another actor who did the voice for Mr. Miyagi. And then there was somebody else who did Daniel's voice. It'd been great if somebody would have did a video game. <laughs> yeah. At South Peak and let somebody write a script. Yeah. There was it. a video game. Um, it was out for N Nintendo and I think there was a computer game. And uh, a while back, my uh, 13, well, now 14 year no, 13 year old. Now he's 13. Um, we downloaded uh, a playable version of the Nintendo game. And <laughs> I remember it not being the greatest <laughs> my son played it he was he got further than i ever did but he was like yeah this is not a good game <laughs> but yeah there were only 13 episodes of the cartoon oh it's like a netflix series <laughs> it's 13 episodes i mean but i mean like back then that really is short but like now it's almost like common that we have We're going to have a dance off. And you too. There uh, are episodes of the cartoon uh, on YouTube. We'll have to check that out. Just yeah. Out of curiosity, to see what. It's very much in the style of like 80s animation back then, like G.I. Joe and that style of animation. It's very much. Hold tens.
had a neighbor do this, like did something like this, but not a, I don't know. They did a thing where you, you uh, light a candle and you put it and it floats up in the air like a little. Yeah. You seen that before? Yeah, those are cool. Yeah, those are really neat. And I saw them do it. We were walking, and I kind of like startled them. I went to. I said, "Oh, I knocked on the back fence," and I said, "I said." I said, Mevin police. <laughs> well, I, then I find out they, after find out that they were doing it in honor of her, her father had passed away and they, they were lighting these candles. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I felt like, oh, uh, this, yeah. I was trying to be funny and it's one Just, of those times. Yep. Now, now they've go. sworn a blood oath against you. It really had been really, really nice to me. I can't, I can't, I can't speak enough about that. But they really were good about it. But I felt bad because I felt like I just kind of, for a second, kind of put a little ripple in their, in their, you They're know, self. each other in their language, saying like "white devil" interrupted our. Yeah. This is a great scene. Watch Pat Morita during this. He's just, he's so good. Uh, there's that bonsai tree or that mm -hmm. that was yeah that's a great I mean talk about it's like Pat Morita doesn't say anything in that scene but his face just conveys everything yep because he's so. listening to Daniel Yummy. All right. <laughs> Good guess, Daniel. So I do. I do think that's one of the things that he, that Johnny was more of a skilled fighter, obviously. Oh yeah. But I think that's. I think Daniel was a smarter was a smart fighter by using blocks and counter punches to to his advantage. I think that yeah. was if you're if we're going to talk about.
Don't be there. Uh -oh. <laughs> that look. Counterpunch. Just say it. Ask Trump. Ask your shirt. Danielle. <laughs> no, it's Daniel. Daniel. No. I'll get you. Oh. He was like, I still whip you. <laughs> you should be all night long. <laughs> oh. Sing song. Okay. I want your sex. <laughs> on the funnel, let me do on the flute. <laughs>
That looks nothing like what he was doing. <laughs> sure. No, no, my was um storm. Yeah, I was just this. doing this. You should start doing the Carlton just week. Not unusual to be loved by anyone. Unusual to be loved by anyone. <laughs> they should put other music to this, like rap or something, you know. Just... <laughs> Baby rattle. It's so freaking skinny, man. But built. Yep. I think Bruce Lee would have been proud of that. Bow, bow, bow. Let's get it on. Well, it's a ritual, all right. It's a courting ritual. It's what you call a booty call. <laughs> Bill Conti behind the camera. Yeah, no. this is about what.
Oh. oh she still got some fresh eggs. The glory of love. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. I know this is not uh, we're not going to talk about Karate Kia 3 very much here I don't, I don't want to go to it too much yet but it does make me if then I think Robin Lively is a great, a great actress don't yeah. not speaking ill of her but if they thought that she was too young to be a quote quote love interest for Daniel to have there be some kind of romantic yeah such friendship, why did they just recast it? Yeah, it's like I, know. It's, I mean, it's like again, it's not the fact of that she's not she wasn't a good actress or capable of. Right. It's just like if yeah. you if you really are worried about it, hire someone else. Yeah, it's like. And I, I don't I don't get that. You know, I'm a, I'm a long Catcher Daniel. Castle, Castle Bar Way. Now I do I, I this is hard to know. I don't know if it is the is the castle is this part here is this stuff is this real or is this like this all it's movies that, yeah that's a matte painting yeah that is true that yeah it's the, the right side Not to everybody, Dan. Mm. This is like an 80s cafe, like, you know, like Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sell cars, so. Tiny Dancer. Hold me closer, tiny dancer. <laughs> Dirt, you want to do dirty dancing? Do you want to do like <laughs> fame? What kind of dance? Oh, Staying alive. Long. That's staying alive. Long. What kind of that actor? That's being yes. Long. That was him. He was in Jurassic Park, among other things. Gotham. Yep. I mean, he's been, I mean, t- I mean, there's his, I'm sure his filmography is long. Yeah. <laughs> the understatement of the year. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> He see you, he kill you. Now this is about the same time as is uh just one of the guys, isn't it? Film, filming wise, I think so. Yeah. So I wonder if, like, you know, they had a ton of coke placement. We talked about that in that the podcast. Yeah. I wonder. I don't. Oh, look who it is! Yep. So he was obviously he was on leave from his Top Gun assignment. Trevette.
Yes. Yeah, that was Clarence Gilliard. So his character was Sundown in Top Gun. So I'm going to take it that that's that he's still playing Sundown. He just happens to be a sign over there. And So, yeah, these movies came out, Top Gun and then The Karate Kid Part 2, really close to each other. Obviously, we just did the 35th anniversary of Top Gun. But. So, he, here, he's just li – Clarence Gilliard is just listed as GI number one. So, I will go with the fact that he, that he is still sundown from Top Gun. This is his a continuation of his character. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Daniel does that. I mean, I give praise. Sorry, Chosen. <laughs> what are we going to get? Say what? Looks like Charles Darwin. I've come courting you. Yucky.
Should I tell him I love him? Sure. You broke my heart. Secret crush. I just love it if he just chopped that thing in two right then and there. Ike. Oh, look, they're at Arnold's. <laughs> Got a great chef and makes a great hamburger right there. Yeah. Great cook. James Dean. I think so. Watch me go. Boy, he has got some sick moves. Whoa. Da -da -da -da. She's so cute. Uh, would you marry me? There you go, right there. Pow. Coming through. It's coming around. Hey. You hit me in my pee pee.
gum you've been drinking. That is kind of neat how. I'm surprised like Sato would have gone off on him if he'd done that. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's neat that how Cooper Kai in season three that. Yeah. You can tell he has a whole different, you know, obviously attitude and approach and feelings toward. Banzai! Banzai! Only time somebody's gotten a hit on Miyagi. I know. Yeah, so the mercy and still can't mercy for weak. Because tomorrow you clean this mess up. <laughs> More lessons, Anderson. I had a shirt very similar to that. I think mine was blue and blue, like a blue and checkerboard like that. Yep. Very similar, though. Talk about some 80s fashion, 80s style. Yeah. Yeah, I got mine from Chess King. Yeah, exactly. I think I probably <laughs> where I got it from. What surprised me? 
Good old chess king. That's where I got my parachute pants. <laughs> yes. Someone had a, a thing on that on one of those eighties Facebook groups. And I was like, I had a black pair and a gray pair, but this, but there was a difference. People talk about, I think people were confused. We're talking about parachute pants. They had the zippers parachute mm-hmm. pants. You're talking about what people were, they thought that what MC hammer. Right. Or, you know, which I, I always consider that being the, the Michael Jackson era of, uh, Break dancing and uh, the zippers that yeah. would which you could sell parachute. That's what you call parachute pants. Yep. Don't be that way, Sato. Sato wins. He died in 1996, so 10 years after this was. Oh, wow. He's been gone for 25 years, man. Wow. Yeah. It's hard to believe. Yep. Thank you. 
It's like the things you put, you do shaving. The barbers use for shaving cream. <laughs> Just gonna shave him. And I was like, well, I'm gonna shave you. I guess that's supposed to be a whisk. I guess. Yep. Go ahead, try it. So it's not, is this Barbersaw? Oh, yeah. Bring him in.
Hey, it's a little girl. One day, I'm going to be a senior vice president of sales for an automotive company. Exactly. It is wild to watch this again after watching yeah. Cobra Kai. It's like. I'll go, I'll go. I know, son, I gave her to you. Shows you how awesome Mr. Miyagi was. Yeah. Oh, see, I'm talking about this and for for Cobra Kai, but they how they brought, they, how they brought back the same little girl, yeah, and. Those of you are listening, you have not watched Cabra Kai yet. You just spoiled it for him. Huh? <laughs> What'd you say? I said, you just spoiled it for him. I just spoiled it for you, but you need to, but because of what I just said, hopefully you'll go back and watch. I didn't say what happened exactly, <laughs> even though you alluded to it a minute ago, but still.
because my useless nephew didn't have the balls to do it. Exactly. The big old lightning bolt strikes Daniel. Apparently, what he's saying in Japanese as he runs off is uh, not very nice. <laughs> it's Sometimes they give Daniel lines like that. Is it's kind of like the obvious, but I don't know. Sometimes it's Sato. Nice. The back of his shirt. It looks like the Google Chrome symbol. I do see what you're saying about yeah. that. You dance with me. <laughs> Just me. Just me. <laughs> Private dancer. <laughs> <Tell you. laughs> like Tina Turner, you private dancer. <laughs> After the dance, we sacrifice the Westerner. <laughs> He's having some uh, Uncle Jesse's moonshine. Uncle Jesse's moonshine. Tusk. Or, or, and then afterwards, Mr. Darlin's going to play. <laughs> Don't worry, kid. One day I'm going to ask you for a favor. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to need your help. <laughs> so that show Stingray, he, he helped sure. people and he helped people, but he's like, he's, how can yeah. I repay you? He's like, one day I might need your help. That's right. Was Sato wearing socks with flip flops? I think so. <laughs> White socks with flip flops. Yep. 
Well, I have to say slides are better in today's world, but that actually is worse. Yeah. Y'all ready for this? This is the underground Kumite. <laughs> Frank Dukes. <laughs> Put up your Dukes. Time to watch it, guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. Jinx, that's it. <laughs> to watch your okay, USA. <laughs> <laughs> Butterfly knife. Go on, Daniel, son. Ah, there's the crux. This is not tournament. This is real. Kumite, Kumite, Kumite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did. I think I originally said in uh, when we watched Bloodsport. Yeah, I think I said I need, we need to do a mashup between the Karate Kid. I think I said that about the end. Yeah, it still applies. I think I need to. Uh... Yeah, but her hair smells so good. Ooh. Ooh. Here it comes. Not this time, Karate Kid. Everybody's got one. Yep. They're party favors. <laughs> it's 
like a cult. <laughs> this is what's weird. Yeah, you saw you do the same thing I do. I do oh, tell your son. I like that that smile and nod. Approval. The Question end. mark. <laughs> we thought it was. It's just beginning, folks. We fight for your honor. Now, it says return as the Cobras. Chad McQueen is mentioned there. The beginning, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the yeah, but he is there with a baseball cap on his head, and I think it's been confirmed. I think it was on the Fast Rewind website says this that he had dyed his hair for the first movie. That's right, and uh, he had he 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 was not going to dye his hair a second time. I think it was worth it for X amount of screen time, which is very you know a couple shots. Yeah, so he's back there. With a cap over it, with the baseball cap over his his right. head, and, and so we fight for Helena. Gonna live forever. No end together. No. Glory of love. There you go, Chris. Keep at it, man. Da, 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 da. No end together. Did it all. We didn't do it for a tournament, man. We did it for love. Oh, that, okay. The autograph fan, um, Garth Johnson and Brett Johnson. Yeah. That one little kid. I remember. I saw. I remember. I thought I remember him from somewhere. He was in the. That one little kid was in the TV show Small Wonder. Oh. Oh, is that Brad? Brad as a, is is this listed as Brad Wong? Uh, I didn't see that. I guess so. Yeah. Let me see here. Yep, his first name is Brad or Bradley. But he goes by what's it go by now? BD. Huh. You've been dreaming of. No. Yep, it's been there's a title card of kids been used for permission by DC Comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this uh, was BD Wong's first role. Wow. 
first movie role. Oh, way. And that was The Karate Kid Part Two. Daniel LaRusso will return. So how many, okay, is asking to rate this. Hey, this is, this is a great way to post commentary. Yep. Uh, how'd you, how did you like this movie? How would you rate it? You got five stars. I got mine already. I got mine already over to where I stopped. Right. So, I'd like to hear what you say. Then I can if, tell you what I. If the first one is five, I give this one probably four stars. Four and a half. I think as sequels go, especially sequels during the eighties, it's it's a good sequel. And it made it made more money than the first one, which is a rarity for yeah. a sequel. Uh, yep. Especially it's one of those brain. cases. I think critics, you know, weren't so kind to it. It was critics were very mixed, um, but I think audiences enjoyed it. And um, yep, you know, uh, I will say, however, um, so yeah. What what would you um, what would you give this? Yeah, I had I had a four. I had it. That's exactly. I'd already went over to the yeah. I I it. Obviously, the glory of love helps helps the movie. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a whole star by itself. That's, That's right. You know, like it got up from a three to a four just by just on that alone. Peter Cetera is the heart Peter, of this movie. Yeah, he's yeah. He 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 makes it. A, he makes it four. Uh, but no, I th- I I think that it's it's neat to get more of a Miyagi. And I think that, and I think that kind of goes back to what, like you said earlier about karate, about how well, you know, Ralph Macchio did with Karate Kid, the first one, and how it's kind of his story through his eyes. Yeah. And we got Cobra Kai, which is kind of Johnny's story. Yeah. Even though they're all involved, but it's kind of like through through his perspective on things. And now he's the underdog and big going forward. But I think with this, it's kind of like you kind of – this is where I think where it becomes the Miyagi-verse that they talk about. I think yeah. this is the movie that cements, cements, cements that, and you see that going forward. You know, what's great about this movie, what I love the most is that you learn more about Mr. Miyagi and about his life before he came to the United States. And But at the same time, it didn't – it gave you just enough – there's still much about him that it's like, you know, like the whole story of him, like coming to the States and, right, um, you know, I don't know if it's ever going to happen or if it ever would be entertained, but I mean, I think it would be kind of cool if there was a way to do some sort of like prequel of seeing Mr. Miyagi when he was a young man, you know, joining the army and fighting in world war two and all the things that he did. Um, I don't know if the Cobra Kai guys would ever consider doing something like that, but, uh, you know, I, I, for one, I think it would be interesting just because Mr. Miyagi is such a great character. You've got this really strong relationship between Daniel, Mr. Miyagi, you know, they build that relationship in the fir- first one. The second one, it grows deeper because the focus is about Mr. Miyagi and it's about Daniel, you know, deepening his respect and his love. I mean, like by the second one, Mr. Miyagi is like a father to Daniel. Right. But in the third one, that relationship is tested and there's a break there. They kind of go, they come apart because Daniel, it's kind of like, he doesn't want to listen to the wisdom of his sensei, his father figure and learning the consequences of that. I think watching these movies, it just makes me appreciate more and more what the, the folks who are doing Cobra Kai, like, like it's evident to me that they love these movies. They get these movies, they understand these characters and they just, they not only pay tribute to them, but what they have these characters doing Daniel, especially in this case. um, It's just, I think it's such a, an appropriate continuation and just really satisfying and I think it makes the movies all the more enjoyable now that you kind of know what's coming. 
And, yep. you know, especially with this one. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad we got to watch this and we got to do it on its 35th anniversary and, uh, yeah. which I still have a hard time grasping that, you know, 35 years ago, I was sitting in a movie theater in Durham, North Carolina, watching this movie for the first time. Well, that was great. I'm glad we got to watch that. I don't know if there's much else we can add to it. Um, you know, we have, this is the, we're doing these a little out of order. Um, we obviously missed the 35th anniversary for the first Karate Kid. Um, but uh, but I, I imagine at some point we will get all of these co- commentaries for all of these movies, because if there's if there if there's a trilogy that needs to that we need to tackle, this is definitely at the top of the list. Many fans of The Karate Kid Part 2 are also fans of the television show Cobra Kai, which continues the story the Karate Kid movies began. Because I don't want to risk spoiling things for those who haven't caught up on the show's third season, I'll simply say that The Karate Kid Part 2 gets a little bit of resolution and a heavy dose of where are they now with regards to some of the movie's characters. We hope you enjoyed this 35th anniversary movie commentary celebration of The Karate Kid Part 2. You may be wondering where our commentary is for the first Karate Kid movie. Well, we don't have one. Yet. But rest assured, we will cover all of the Karate Kid movies at some point. Well, at least the first three. Support for the Midnight Movie Snack podcast comes from monthly donation made by listeners like you. Help us continue to make episodes about the movies we all love by supporting us today. You'll find the link in the episode's show notes. Until next time, thanks for listening.